Hello everyone, welcome back to our classical music improvisation channel. This video is part of a series where we find improvisation inspiration in Quantz's flute method from 1752, but it's not only for flute players. In this video I want to look at the so-called wesentliche manieren, or the essential ornaments. These ornaments have a limited compass, a relatively fixed form and now have standard names like the trill, mordant or appoggiatura. In the description you can find timestamps where to find specific ornaments in the video if you think like I already know everything about appoggiaturas. I know who you are. Both the execution of and where one can add these ornaments are important to us as improvisers so that we can get even better in sense of stylistic and musical refinement. Quanz goes into a lot of detail and I decided to basically tell you everything he says. Quanz first talks about appoggiaturas, which he calls Vorschlag. Appoggiaturas are both ornamental and essential, meaning that we can also find them in the already written down melodies by the composer before any ornamentation is added, written down in normal notes. Quanz writes that a galant melody should mostly sound consonant, but when there are too many consonants, it might sound boring. So the appoggiatura is a way to add some dissonance, some spice. An appoggiatura uses a gentle articulation with a little swell and is then slurred to the following note. When the melody leaps, appoggiaturas are not generally used. When the melody approaches the main note from above, you can add an appoggiatura from above, and vice versa. However, on page 154 in the English translation by Riley, uh, and in Quanz's example of how to ornament an adagio, he seems to let go of this rule sometimes. For example, in this run of 16th note triplets, And when we are dealing with the tierce coulée, often Quanz will add such a falling, unaccented appoggiatura to the first note already, even if the melody did not arrive from that direction. There are two types of appoggiaturas, passing appoggiaturas and accented appoggiaturas. especially in between falling thirds of the same note values, which are the just mentioned tierce coulée. The slur starts on the appoggiatura, but don't confuse them with the Lombardic rhythm, where the Lombardic rhythm would be accented. And here it's unaccented. If an appoggiatura is already written in normal notes in the composition, then an added appoggiatura will be short and before the beat. Perhaps similarly in figure 19 we see a short appoggiatura unaccented used in scales in which notes are repeated. Another exception can be found in chapter 17 and is one that is debated often. Quanz says that these are fast and before the beat, especially in slow movements. Otherwise, the composer would have written them out normally, and this is part of the French style of playing. But this is not to say that all appoggiaturas before short note values are played like this. When we look at chapter 13, we can see the following examples, which both show how we can ornament scalar figures with appoggiaturas, and also that these particular types are to be played on the beat, mostly taking up approximately half of the main note. An appoggiatura will be accented in all other cases and then take half of the length starting on the beat.
In the case of a dotted note, the appoggiatura will take two-thirds of the length of the main note. In 6-8 or 6-4, we sometimes find an appoggiatura before a tight over note. And in this case, the appoggiatura will replace the first main note. In any meter, if a rest follows the main note, the appoggiatura will take the length of the main note that was written, and the main note will be played during the following rest. An exception to these rules is when there is an appoggiatura before a dissonant trill. Then it must be short so that the dissonance of the trill can be heard more, but the appoggiatura will still be accented and on the beat. Generally, the appoggiaturas are used for tenderness and melancholy. If you want to add more cheer and gaiety, you can add the following ornaments. The accented ones can be used on the note or notes in the bar that are relatively longest, so long as the melody is conjunct. The unaccented appoggiaturas are used for all falling thirds to make them more cantabile. And when appoggiaturas are written, you can add a short one too, and in scalar passages with or without repeated notes. And the rules are more important than whether an appoggiatura is notated as an eighth note or a sixteenth note. Um, if the rules aren't clear, then small sixteenth notes should be played fast, still starting on the main note. Um, it seems to be that it's only starting from uh, CPE Bach. He seems to be the first writer to want to use the value of an appoggiatura to show its notated length. Battements or mordants can be used in leaps, where appoggiaturas are not permitted, and so they can take the place of an appoggiatura, but when there is a leap. The battements are generally very fast and can be used on fast and slow notes equally. In both cases, the fingers move very quickly, but for a slow note, the battement could start on the note below the main note. Shakes or trills add great luster. Quanz says, without trills, one's art is incomplete. For some people, it's a lifelong learning process, and others can just do it. So already in the 18th century, this was true. Shakes should be played at different speeds. For example, depending on the acoustics of the room, whether you're playing a high or low instrument or high or low in your range and depending on the character of your piece. However, the slowest and fastest trill speeds are never usable, except for in French music, where the fast one is called chevroté or bleating. He says, the super fast one is used by some of the greatest singers, but don't imitate them just because they are famous. And anyway, it's like totally harder to do a moderate and even trill. Quanz says that some Italian violinists and oboists still used the thirds trill that was used in the olden days. We know this idea from, for example, Ganassi's method book from the 16th century, but apparently it was still in use in the 18th century. And even also the famous uh, method by the singer Tosi also talks about not doing it, which implies that some people indeed still did it. And this is what that could have sounded like. So Quanz wants the trill to be even and moderate, which is in contrast to, for example, Tartini, which talks about starting slowly and then speeding up. He then says 
that it's strange to give an exact speed, which, you know, makes sense, but then does suggest the very precise eight notes for every beat in the piece. In a faster or happier piece, this could be even faster, um, and especially used on short notes or uh, when there's a few short notes in succession. A trill has an appoggiatura, the trill itself, and then the termination. And even when the appoggiatura and termination are not written, they are implied and should be added. Interestingly, Quan suggests that the appoggiatura could be from below as well, uh, following the rules for appoggiaturas from before. My specialist friends referred me to trills we can find, for example, described by Bach in the Klavierbüchlein, written for his son Wilhelm Friedemann Bach. Uh, and this version would sound like this. But Quanz doesn't write that the lower appoggiatura results in a different ornament, for instance this uh, double cadence, or that it should be treated any differently from the upper appoggiatura. So perhaps it should sound like this and indeed take half of the main note. When a melody starts with a trill after a rest, the appoggiatura can be short. So then it would not take half of the note as per the rules that we talked about before. Then finally follows a table with all the fingerings and detailed descriptions of each trill for the flute. In chain trills, which I always think sound amazing, there is not always time for the appoggiatura and termination. However, when the first trill is notated with them, so with the appoggiatura and termination, you should use them in each following trill as well. A trill on the first note of a longer tight over note indicates that the entire note should be trilled till the end without articulation or stopping. Furthermore, he advises not to add an appoggiatura after a trill on the final note of a phrase, especially when the trill is one note higher than the close. In chapter eight, Quan says that turns are often combined with trills at cadences in the following way. In a slow movement, when the music stops in the following way, before a rest with one or two notes a third apart, you can add this beautiful collection of ornaments. If there is a fermata above the following rest, you can make the trill much longer. In chapter 13 about improvised variations, we find a few other examples of where and how to add trills and appoggiaturas. We have seen some of these already, but just to be completely complete, some of the, them are repeated here. For example, in scalar figures where each note is repeated twice, we can add appoggiaturas or half shakes like this. And in scalar figures, we can add appoggiaturas with a little jump in between the notes, or even for every note in the scale. Interestingly, for dotted notes, this seems to be a little different, where Quanz, again for slow tempi, suggests this. And here you can also add the mordants and turns, as was discussed before. For dotted notes, when there is an appoggiatura before a dotted note, don't add trills or mordants. When there are trills on the dotted notes, then please don't play the termination. Quan says some interesting things about the accento or schleifer as well. So when written like this, the rhythm becomes double dotted with a crescendo on the first note and a decrescendo on the following notes, and then even an up bow on the last 64th note. <laughs> Very detailed. Uh, 
the normal accento should just be played fast but starts on the beat. Finally, Quanz also talks about what he calls the Anschlag. Uh, it consists of two fast notes ornamenting the arrival note in a rising interval. It's tender, sighing and pleasing and should be played very quickly, yet weakly, and tied to the main note. It's nicest on the interval of 2nd, 4th and 7th, all rising obviously, and will then start half a note under the main note, not a whole note. All the written out examples in this video give a fast overview of Guanz's writings and can be found in a PDF file, which you can get by following us on Patreon, or you could buy in our store through the link in the description. Well, thanks for watching this mega video again. Uh, I hope you don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and, and of course, if you can, support us on Patreon. Hopefully you found this video interesting. If you'd like to see videos about other method books and treatises, let me know in the comments which ones. And well, in the coming weeks, we're talking more about uh, composition, about ornamentation in orchestra, about cadenzas, uh, and many more things that we can find in Quanz's fantastic flute method. Bye.